Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. In my last video, I was a bit morose because I didn't have a BBC Micro to play on. However, uh, as soon as I was aware I wouldn't, I sent off for some pieces and believe it or not, they have actually all just arrived and we're talking before Christmas. It's literally Christmas Eve and they've arrived. So I'm going to be able to do a quick project for you. We're going to open these bags over at the bench and I'll uh, show you how to install them. First things first is the RGB cable. That's an RGB to SCART. The BBC produces an amazing Sharps picture on RGB. Make use of it. <clears throat> I need that of course because my only cable has gone. Secondly, we have this which I've purchased online and everything has been stuck inside the bag. So I'm just going to peel those off bit by bit. That's an interface. That is the EEPROM chip that we're going to have to put inside the BBC Micro. And there is the disk of software. So this is a Turbo SPI interface. And uh, I don't know what SPI stands for in this case. If it means spy as in spy bus. As in I squared C in spy. Or just some other thing. Um, but I will just show you that real quick. You can buy these online. I got these off eBay. This is the second lot I purchased from a particular vendor and I'm very pleased. So I got another one. I think they're about £15, £16. They come with a 2 gigabyte micro SD card and that though is even oversized for what you need. So if you see them with different size cards, the only um, file that goes on here is about 100 megabytes maximum. Maximum. So you don't need anything bigger than that. There's a bunch of software and manuals that come with it on a CD, so that's kind of handy, but it already preloaded full of the regular games and things you need, so really you just shove that in the user port. However, you do have to put in the EEPROM chip, and uh, I'll show you how to pop that straight in. There are differences though, if you've got a Model B or you've got a, a Master, there's definitely differences between those two. And if you have a different revision or you've already got uh, chips in those sockets, you might have to play with it a little bit, but we'll, we'll, we'll come to that if we need to. And then I have this, which is the PiTube Direct interface for a Raspberry Pi. And I do have a Raspberry Pi here. This is a Pi um, Zero. And you'll see this on another video where I've actually soldered the header on here, but it's pretty much the same interface. And that simply pops on there. And you get the software off the internet to put on the SD card. Again, links to the other video down below. And you plug that into the tube interface. So first things first, let's drag up one of those computers here, um, probably the Model B, and we'll open up the hood. This is a fairly beat up Model B, which you may or may not have. Most people have Model Bs. And you can see here it's actually got wood screws in it. It's, it's a real, it's a real beater, but that doesn't mean it's not worth the love. It's got Econet on it, so I can network this one. You've got to play with them. You've got to take what you can sometimes in this world, and you've got to give them all the appropriate amount of love. So you saw there's two screws on the back, two on the bottom. They say fix on them, so that's how you know which ones you need to remove replace those wood screws. I've since bought a set of self tappers so I can upgrade the, uh, the dodgy fix that someone else had made. Let's flip this over and just pop the lid then and you can see inside. Aha, aha, aha. Now being a Model B <laughs> you can see that we cannot get to the sockets that we need to put our chips in so I'm gonna have to take the keyboard out you can see that's basically where they have to go, um, but we're going to have to take the keyboard out by undoing the screws and nuts. And you'll see there's the nuts, and underneath there are some Phillips screws. And yet, yeah, knowing me, I haven't done them up too tight, so I can loosen them by hand. Not a great design, I'll say, but could be a lot worse. Just do that for both sides. Once you've done that, you can just fold the keyboard back. 
and my one's got a bit of crustiness there but it doesn't seem to have a problem and that will reveal your ROM sockets and you'll need to get to these in the future if you want to make an upgrade or install a sideways RAM or something like that. Now I can't remember specifically the order of these I think this is the operating system and this will be the language so one will be the uh, regular BBC micro stuff that you uh, see when you boot up the thing that does the beep all of that is there and one is the language which is normally basic but I believe you could get Fortran I want to say or one of those going on now they're all organized in terms of priority I believe these two it, the highest priority is the rightmost one uh, it, I think it's only important for certain types of software which we don't have right now to worry about fortunately there's nothing else in here they're just ready to go um, I'm just looking here on the markings of them. They're not really too much, but this one is a PB04, and uh, one, uh, this is a 13128PB04, and this is a 128PB05. So that's the only marking on these particular ones. And this one says Turbo SPI 0.A3 Basic 2. So that's what we want. And I'm just going to press it on the desk slightly, just to make sure all those pins. Are nicely aligned. What I'm going to do is just pop that straight in here. And you can hear it crunch down nicely. And that's pretty much all you've got to do. And if you haven't already, now's a good time to consider fixing the capacitors on the power supply before they inevitably blow up. But all you need to do is really put your screws in for your keyboard and the rest back on. And then we'll just flip it over and this part's super easy just locate your user port here and this interface I've confirmed does fit on the master as well the master has a lot smaller a gap here and this will definitely fit in there but just about um, so just pop that in like that and you can see which way around it is it's got a keyway here so you really can't get it wrong otherwise it you know it just won't fit you just push that in straight like that and you've got your SD card already good to go so you don't really have to do anything with that when you get it from the uh, vendor. Now just to show you this I think you should probably just test one thing at a time but just to show you while this is flipped over how to install it um, you really just pop that in I mean you can take the pie out same sort of way you just pop it in that way this jumper select whether or not the BBC is powering up your Pi or if the Pi is going to run off its uh, USB. I don't think on a Pi Zero you're going to get to the USB ports at all once it's installed so you can't run it off that. But it's exactly the same. You pop it in. There's no keyway by the way but you really can't go wrong on this. And both of these interfaces you can attach remotely if you've got the appropriate cables. And I can confirm that even this one fits in a master, but it's super tight. But once you get that interface in, it will definitely fit. This gap here is pretty much the limit on a master. So you can see everything here is, is much tighter. But I'm going to flip it over and we'll go power it up. Um, I'll just take this out though for now. You can leave that part of the interface in. It's no problem. That's just a signal uh, level converter for the Pi. So you can leave that in like that. Shouldn't affect the uh, boot up. I plugged in the RGB, plugged in the power, the moment of truth, and it works. And you can see here, Turbo MMC if everything is successful. Once it's booted, you'll see the standard messages at the top with your memory. Uh, difference now is that you'll see Turbo MMC telling you it's loading that Turbo MMC ROM. All you need to do is hold down, shift and brake. And you go straight into the Turbo SPI menu. And from here, you can just go through the 65 pages of software when you get this. And fortunately, if you do know the, the name and number of particular games, you can type in the page. So 34D will take you to the last ninja. Actually, I didn't know it would do that, but I'm pretty pleased it did. Let's try that. I'm going to hit return. Um, you can see it loads super quick. That's because it's, it's basically like a super mega hard disk at this point it's getting it it's slamming it into the BBC as quickly as the user port will allow it um, and you have all your favorites uh, you could go play your Repton but oh what sorry I might have to have a quick go while I'm here 
there was something with Last Ninja. I'm never really any good at the combat. And nothing's changed. <laughs> and then shift break whenever you want to, and away you go. Now there are lots of things on that CD software that you can explore, you know, that cover how to use the ROMs, how you can make a sideways RAM interface, how you can load ROMs from that, so you can load ROM images, perhaps you can load other languages, all sorts of things you can do with it. So you'll need to explore. Uh, if you have a master, there are a couple of gotchas. So let's just have a quick look inside the master. Here's the BBC master. You might recognize this from previous videos on recapping and replacing the battery pack. In fact, re-engineering battery packs. You saw two, by the way, on the battery pack. One where I reconditioned the existing one and one where I remade one from scratch, and that's what that one is. Now, here are the ROM cartridges on here, ROM slots, rather, next to the cartridge. Uh, what you can do is you can pop that little grid away, just turn it around, still connect to the speaker, so don't yoink it, and you'll find two sockets here. Now, there are some idiosyncrasies here. You've got to be a bit careful, and that's because it does matter which slot you put them in and the configuration of these jumpers. So here are the links, and they determine the addressing, basically enabling these variations of these slots. So what I would do though to start with is just leave them as is. You can see them on the CD that came with the unit and various materials on how to configure them. Just pop it straight in this one here, this, this vacant one. So it's the third down from the top. Check the pins again, make sure that they are all... <laughs> <laughs> don't don't throw it in, uh, are all straight. And of course, this notch is gonna face inwards on this board. So just line up one set like that, and just pop in the bottom like that. That's all you need to do. We'll just pop those interfaces onto the master, and as I said before, it's a little bit tighter, but you'll have room. Get that in there. And you'll find by far the tightest one is this. You can see it's pretty much the same depth as the aperture, but if you put it in at an angle like that, just a slight angle, you should be able to just turn it in the socket and give a little wiggle. And if you can't you know, manage to push that in, just a little flathead screwdriver behind it will just give it that little bit of pressure. And you'll see there that it's a nice tight fit, but it definitely has clearance. You won't be hitting your table when that's on there like that. It's time to switch on the master and you'll see when it boots nothing's changed in terms of the message that you'll normally get and that's because all of the routing between the ROMs are, is handled internally. So the first thing you need to do is type in star ROM, oh, sorry, star ROMBAS plural and look through your list and you'll see a various bunch of ROMs here. This is the standard disk filing system and this is the uh, additional disk filing system which is the one it's currently using and this is the ROM we've inserted which is currently marked as unplugged. So what we need to do is we need to type in star unplug 9. So we want to unplug this ROM here because we don't need that anymore. I'm going to say star insert Eight to insert our new ROM. And if we type in star ROMs, you'll see that's been done now. And if I do con uh, shift break, control break, you'll see now this has changed back to the default uh, filing system, but not our Turbo MMC. So what we need to do is, again, star ROMs, just so you can see the list here. We type in star configure. Oops. If you can spell configure, <laughs> file, eight, and that should route the filing system to where we want it to go, which is our new ROM. And I'm just going to turn it off and on again, so we just do a complete sanity check and it boots up, and there you go, Turbo MMC. And should, if we type in star cat, be able to see what's on the volume there. So something we would like to do is to get it to boot from here. And I'm just going to have a little bit of a guess. Um, <laughs> start configure. Boot. I think that's 
what we need to do. So, yes! <laughs> so Star Configure Boot tells it that you do want it to use the exclamation boot file, which is a script, and you get straight into everything here, which is uh, pretty much exactly as we saw on the BBC B. Now, something we would like to try though is that Raspberry Pi interface, which we do have connected up. So first of all, we do need to enable that. Now let's see if we can remember how we do that. Um, I'm going to go into a different mode. So mode, uh, is it mode one? No. Star configure. I went to mode one because I just wanted to read more, give me a bit more height. Um, you see there's a command here called intube. So star configure. Now how do we do the external tube? Xtube. E-X-T-U-B-E. -E. Star configure Xtube. So we want it to use the external tube interface, not the internal tube interface. And then we're going to again do shift break. Oop. <laughs> so I've disabled the boot function so we can have a look further on this. Let's see if there's any configuration. Ah, I see there's a no tube command, but there's also a tube, so let's turn that on. Star. Boom, come on. Yes! And there we have it. So we did, not only did we have to tell it which tube interface to use, the internal or the external, um, but we also want to enable or disable the tube, which is convenient if you think about it because um, you might want this booting up uh, without the tube if you're using uh, those games. So you can see there Acorn Tube 6502 64K, so that's great, thumbs up on that. Now let's try something. Let's try star configure boot. Let's enable the boot back again. <laughs> Tube on! It doesn't like that boot menu because it's saying tube on. Oh well. Anyway, right, I think I've got it. I uh, know that you can select different disk images using the dboot command and I've gone through and managed to figure out that the tube version of Elite is on 45. So you can see the tube is on, the Turbo MC is on, but it's not running because it's saying tube on. So I don't know how to get around that at the minute. So we can't use the main menu, but the disk itself has a menu and it says here, Elite Tube. No! Another little bit of jiggery pokery. I've changed uh, something in the listing that does star disk when we want star card. Let's see if that makes it work. Oh, yes siree. That was a bit of luck. Look how smooth it is. It's so smooth. Load new commander. Uh, yes. Uh, one. Dr. A. Which drive? Um, ooh, I don't know what that means. I just did A. Okay, let's see if we can start. Is it F0? How do we move around? Let's shoot. It's all keyboard control. Oh, that's left. That's spinning the other way. Now, you've got to remember the keyboard on this unit, I haven't cleaned it out or anything, so it's just probably knackered. Because that looks crazy to me. At the moment, it's configured for X to go up. Space bars messing with speed. It, it's, it's crazy fast. It's absolutely crazy fast. I was hoping to just shoot at something. No! What was that, a Viper? What's that? Something's coming. Something's approaching. Is that the space? What? what the heck was that? So you can see it's looking amazingly smooth here. I don't know the keys, but I can tell you it definitely didn't run this smoothly at this frame rate before. It's probably a little bit too fast really. I'll probably have to figure out if there's a way of limiting that because that aperture looks... Whoa! Whoa! He did it! Woohoo! So what can I say? That was a bit of fun, wasn't it? Um, you can see you've got a BBC B, it'll work. If you've got a master, it'll work with a little bit more tinkering. Um, but look at the result. That's absolutely amazing. And there are a lot more tests to do. Check out my other videos on that and see uh, the speed test. You could get your master and BBC running at like 300 megahertz or something. You can do 
lots of things. Hopefully you're going to be tucking into your Christmas dinner soon, um, eating your mince pies. I'm going to go wrap some presents and uh, season's greetings to everyone. See you in the new year. Bye bye.